Hello there, welcome. Hope you're all having a fantastic day. I'd like to say hello to all my subscribers and friends and non-subscribers, uh, bots, trolls and lurkers alike. Welcome and thank you for hitting the video and watching. Let's see if you like it. What are the seven deadly sins and their meanings? Nobody in this world is perfect. Everyone makes mistakes and sins. No one in the world can claim that they have. he has never sinned. All the sins are the outrage of God, and some are specifically considered as an abomination to God. What are the seven deadly sins? Pride, wrath, lust, gluttony, uh, sloth, envy, and greed. Besides these sins also bring harm to the person who commits them, and these sins are said to be deadly. This is because they destroy the soul of a person, the spiritual in this attack, we'll, in this article, we will describe what the seven deadly sins are. If you're interested to know more, read the article to the end. But I'm reading it, so just stay tuned. Pride. Pride or haughty eyes is when a person looks down upon others and it is in fact considered as the root of all sins. As this is sin gives way to the rest of the sins. The pride is characterized as the desire and the persuasion of being superior better and important than others, adopting a high level of confidence which leads towards vanity. Feeling inferior to others is actually a psychological disease. To know more, read that link. So in short, the sin of pride is in reality the selfish ego and the low opinion about others. Pride is also toxic for a person as when a person is proud, no one likes to be in a relationship with him. He loses all the opportunities for success as nobody wants to do business with him. You know, selfish ego, egotistical, it, it, it just goes, yep. So envy, next on this list is a sin of envy, in which a person is jealous of the things the others have and want to achieve or snatch them. Such a person can be harmful to his fellows. Being jealous is a natural process, but if a person consistently holds his jealousy, it can be dangerous. Being jealous is also based on the zodiac of a person. To know more? Yeah, I try not to get into the zodiacs. Uh, it is because the victim starts to think in a weird way and interprets completely wrong whatever comes his way. There are also many disadvantages of being jealous in a relationship, as when one of the partners is struck with the virus of jealousy. The relationship is prone to suspicion and a lack of faith. And that is true. And there's no to be jealous of someone because if someone's going to do it, they're going to do it regardless of, of you saying don't do it. So wrath, an uncontrolled emotion, feeling of anger and hate are known as a wrath. person is said to commit the deadly sin of wrath when he adopts a fierce denial of truth and when he has a desire for revenge, one of the biggest disadvantages of anger is, is that we lose control of our body and mind and commit such things which we should not and we regret later. Also, our anger leads us towards focusing on the negative things which can cause damage to us, to the people around us. Besides, we lose a sign of long-term goals and focus only on the short-term goals which are helpful to the present situation. If you want to control your anger, which you may read, why I'm always angry. Find the answers. Sloth. Sloth is another deadly sin which generates depression, sadness in our attitudes. Sloth or laziness is a negative attitude towards one's responsibility, especially towards the spiritual obligation. It is also referred to as denial or negligence of a person towards his existence. So whatever we want to do in our life demands effort from us. A person who is a victim of a sloth is unwilling to do the thing which God wants him to do because of the effort required in it. It becomes a sin when we slow down our energy and even halt it, which we must use in doing our noble deeds. Gluttony. When we eat and drink excessively, it is considered a deadly sin. Moreover, it is characterized as the excess of anything which can bring harm to us, such as the abuse of alcohol and drinks. Food is a necessity of life, but the sin of gluttony can lead towards the end of life. There's nothing wrong with picking fine food, but when it becomes obsessional, it turns into sin because it leads towards many physical and mental diseases. Eating disorders can be really dangerous. When your food controls you, instead of you controlling the food, it can make you commit further sins 
as in the situation you'll do anything to get food. And believe it or not, I had a problem with food when I was younger. I used to weigh 135 kilograms, and I was a size 28. I was big. I'm six foot, and I was big. I was huge. Yeah. So greed is the next one. The deadly sin of greed is a desire for material, anything in excess. Sometimes it's only to refer to the wealth and materialistic things. It's considered a sin when a person wants to be rich for his own benefit without considering others. It can also lead towards other sins such as stealing, hoarding, plundering and treason. Also, when a person is greedy, he desires to get wrath at any cost, even if he has to do harm to his fellow. These people are selfish, idle, and they do not spend money on society. Thus, they become a non-productive member of society. Lust. When a person has excess sexual thoughts, it is also uncontrollable sexual desires. It's considered a deadly sin. Lust is also considered as a sexual compulsation or sexual addiction. In a religious term, lust is about sabotaging the sexual act and using it for a means which are not productive. Perhaps it is considered a sin because it destroys love. It is kind of a sin where a person uses another person for his own sexual desire. Lust also makes us selfish as we always seek our body. Love is about giving yourself to others and respecting each other, while lust is about taking self-satisfaction by using others. So. In here, typical verses, sin. So we've got the seven deadly sins listed. Pride, envy, gluttony, lust, anger, greed, and sloth. It covers topics relating to sin, repentance, forgiveness, salvation, others that provide biblical guidance for helping Christians to resist the temptation of sin. Learn more about the consequences of sin and how to overcome the temptations of the flesh with these 20 scripture codes. In addition to reading Bible verses, about sin, use prayers for strength to rely on God for self-control over temptation. Scripture and a prayer are the two of our most powerful means to cleanse our hearts and minds. So 1 Corinthians 10, 3, 13. No temptation has overtaken you except what is com- common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so you can endure it. Romans 3.23 For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23 For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Genesis 4.4.7 And Abel bought an offering, fat potions, potions for from some thereof, firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry and his face was downcast. And the Lord said to Cain, Why are you so angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. Galatians 5, 19, 21. The acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, adultery, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissentations, fractions and envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. I warn you as I did before that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. 1 John 1, 8, 10. If we claim to be without sin, we decide ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we will make him out to be a liar and his words are not in us. Mark seven twenty twenty three. He went on, what comes out of a person is what defiles him. For it is from within, out of a person's heart, that evil thoughts come. Sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance and folly. All these evils come from inside and define and defile a person. Psalms 119, 25, 29. 
I am laid low in the dust. Preserve my life in accordance to your word. I gave an account of my ways, and you answered me. Teach me your decrees. Cause to me, cause me to understand the way of your precepts, that I may mediate on your wolf, wolf, wonderful deeds. My soul is weary with sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. Keep me from your deceitful ways. Be gracious to me and teach me your law. Isaiah, Isaiah 40, 28, 31. Do you not know, have you not heard, the Lord is an everlasting God, the creator of the ends of earth? He will not grow tired or weary, and this understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and wearied, young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Colossians 3, 5, 6. Put to death. Therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is adultery, because of these the wrath of God is coming. Matthew 23, 23, 24. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You gave a tenth of your spices, mint, dull, cumin, but you have neglected the more important matters of the law, justice, mercy, faithfulness. You should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former. You blind guides, you strain out the gaunt but swallow a camel. Matthew twenty-five forty-five to 49 He will reply, I truly, I tell you, whatever you did not do for at least one of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. John four ten fourteen, Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who is it, it asks you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you water, living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I gave them will become in them a spring of water, wailing up to the eternal life. James 4, 17, 21. If anyone, then, knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it's a sin for them. Psalms 19, 13, uh, 17. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May not, may they not rule over them, me. Then I will be blameless, innocent of great transgression. May these words of my mouth and this mediation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Proverbs 5, 1, 22. My son, pay attention to my wisdom. Turn your ear towards my words of insight that you may maintain discretion, and that your lips may prosper knowledge. For the lips of the adulterous woman drip honey, and her speech is smoother than oil. But in the end she is bitter as gold, sharp as a double-edged sword. Her feet go down on the earth, her steps lead straight to the grave. She gives no thought to the way of life. Her path wanders amazingly, but she does not know it. Now then, my sons, listen to me. Do not turn aside from what I say. Keep the path. Keep to the path far from her. Do not go near the door of her house, lest you lose your honour to others and your dignity to one who is cruel. Lest strangers feast on your wealth and your toil, enrich the house of another. At the end of a li your life you will groan when your flesh and body are spent. You will say, how I hated discipline, how my heart spurned correction. I would not obey my teachers or turn my ear to instructions, and I was soon and I was soon in serious trouble in the assembly of God's people. Drink water from your own cistern, running water from your own well. Should your springs overflow on the streets, your streams of water in public squares, let them be yours alone, never to be shared with strangers. May your fountain be blessed, and may you rejoice in the wife of your youth. A living doe, a graceful deer, may her breast satisfy you always. May you ever be intoxicated with her love. Why, my son, be intoxicated with another man's wife? Why embrace the bosom of a way, wayward woman? 
For your ways are always in full view of the Lord, and he examines all your path. The evil deeds of the wicked ensnare them. The cords of their sins hold fast. Judges 8, 31 to 35. His concubine, who lived in Shebeham, also bore him a son, whom he named Abramic. Gideon, son of Josh, died at a good old age. He was buried in the tomb of his father of Joash in Ophrah, Oprah of the Abazes. Abe, sorry for saying this wrong. No sooner had Gideon died than the Israelites gained, again prostituted themselves to the Baals. They set up Baal birth as their god and did not remember the Lord their god who had resurrected rescued them from the hands of their enemies on every side. They also failed to show any loyalty to the flam family of Jeroboam, that is, Gideon, in spite of all things he had done for him. Isaiah 64, 6 All of us have become like the one who is unclean, and our right righteous acts are like filthy rags. We are shriveled up like a leaf, and like the wind our sins sweep us away. Proverbs 28.13 Whoever conceals their sins do not prosper, but the one who confesses and renounces finds mercy. 1 John one John 7.9 But if we walk in the light, and he is in the light, and we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his Son, purifies us from sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Okay, so how do we protect ourselves against this? Well, the full armor of God. I mentioned in the last video, Jesus defeated every enemy when he died on the cross and conquered the grave three days later. It is from confidence in his victory that we can put on the full armor God and stand firm in our daily battles. Before we get to seven pieces of armor, how to use them here is the scripture that Paul wrote. So finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but the against the rulers, against the authorities, against the evil powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of the evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on your full armor of God, so that the day, when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, with your feet fitted with readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to this, take up the shield of faith, in which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows with the, of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep praying for the Lord's people. Now, let me guide you through the full armor of God piece by piece, and it will teach you some practical ways and to use them. So the belt of truth. A soldier is only ready for, ready for battle when he is girdled with his belt. A Roman soldier's belt was made of metal and thick and heavy leather. It was carrying a place for his sword. It's also a protective piece that hung down in front. His belt also, his belt hid all the other pieces of his armor together. Held, sorry. To be fitted with his belt, meant he was ready to face action. Truth is, the belt that holds the believer's armor together as well. Ultimate truth can be found in God's word and the person of Jesus Christ. John fourteen six. We must know this truth in order to protect ourselves against our flesh, the world, and the father of lies. Truth grounds us and reminds us of our identity in Christ. How to use the belt of truth. Start your day in the word. How to start your day is vital in winning the daily battles that you will inevitably face because anyone else, before anyone else wakes up, set aside at least 10 minutes to begin your day in the word. It is important that you are able to immerse yourself in scripture without distraction. End your day in the word in the, the quiet place. Before you lay down, dedicate 20 minutes to studying the word. Um, whatever Bible you find helpful but I always find 
the Doi's Reams Bible or the Strong's Bible to actually have more decent information. Um, it's whatever you feel comfortable with. Mesmerized scripture based on the lies you are struggling with. The Bible is a guidebook for life which was written by our Creator. No matter what you are struggling with, there is scripture to point you in the right direction. Do a Google, Google search for Bible verses on, say, you know, sadness, and it'll it'll show you a verse that speaks directly to you. Mesmerize it. Speak it aloud whenever Satan attacks you. So the breastplate of righteousness. The Roman soldier was always equipped with a breastplate. A piece of armor protected his vital organs in the heat of a battle. When he wasn't quick enough to take up the shield, the breastplate was for quick, unexpected advances of the enemy. As believers, we have no righteousness apart from that which we have been given us by Christ. Our breastplate is his righteousness. His righteousness will never fail. Through, Though we have no righteousness of our own, we must still by his power choose to do right. Living a right life, rooted in God's word, is powerful in protecting our heart, killing our flesh, and defending our enemy. How to use the breastplate of righteousness. Identity. Identify righteousness activities in your life that strengthen you. This may be as simple as having an occasional conversation with a homeless person and getting them to know them by their name. Identify unrighteous activities in your life that weaken you. For each of us, this is going to be unique. I found I was consistently watching movies and TV shows that are not in line with my beliefs, but I, by intentionally exposing myself to immoral behavior, I was allowing Satan to weaken the walls that Christ had built around me. Turn your TV off. Stay, don't watch the, yeah. Sandals with the gospel of peace. A Roman soldier's feet were fitted with the sandals called Calvi. These sandals were made to help protect the soldier's feet during their long marches into battle. They had extremely thick soles wrapped perfectly around their ankles in a way that protected against blistering. Calgary also had spikes on the bottom to help them stand firm as they travelled. This helped them have a found, firm foundation. Believers also have a found, firm foundation in the gospel. As believers, we have peace in knowing we are secure in what Jesus has done for, you, for us. How to use the gospel of peace. Preach the gospel to yourself daily. Remind yourself of the hope you have in Jesus Christ because of his sacrifice and you believed in him. You shall not perish but have eternal life. Do not wait until the hardships to remind you of this. Build your foundation on a daily reminder of this hope. You'll be able to get through anything. Share your testimonies with others. The easiest and most effective way to share the gospel with others is to tell your story of how Jesus changed your life. Be a living example. The way you walk through life will be seen by many. When you carry yourself with the fruit of the Spirit, people will stop and notice. Shield of Faith The Roman soldier's shield was a complex piece of armor. The shield, also called a sanctum, was a soldier's primary defensive weapon. It was made of impenetrable wood, leather, canvas, metal that could be doused in water to extinguish the fiery arrows of an enemy. Faith is the shield of the believer. Trusting in God's power and protection is imperative and remaining steadfast. When the battle rages, we must remember that all, God works all things for good. He is always true on his promises. How to use the shield of faith. Take time to remember the promises of God. When the fiery darts try to impact your heart, extinguish them with reminders of God's goodness over your circumstances. Here are some of his promises. He will never forsake you, Deuteronomy 31.6. He will meet all your needs, Philistines 4.19. Call on him and he will answer, Psalms 51.10. He will make your path straight, Proverbs 3.5.6. A soldier's shield was the strongest when linked with another. Band together with other believers in the fight of faith. The best way to band together is through closeness of a small group. This is how the church began. In the first century and this is where your strongest bonds are made to get today now church actually means people it does not mean a building or a you know a temple or anything like that it is actually the people that's what church means and jesus also said to come out of all the assemblies and congregations and churches because they're filled with nothing but demons in she you know wolves uh they're nothing they're demons and wolves in sheep's clothing so recount god's past victories in your life 
in the movie War Room. And if you haven't seen the movie War Room, I suggest you watch it. It's about this um, elderly woman that wants to sell a house and then there's this married couple. Um, the husband was having an affair and cheating on the wife and the marriage was on the bound of breakup. The wife was a a uh, real estate agent and was trying to get this elderly woman to sell a home and this woman had a, a a little room near the bottom of the stairs where she had all these post-it notes where she would put up all her prayers and in the end of that movie the the real estate the woman and her husband the husband that was cheating they weren't you know with god but at the end of the movie they had you know become de- dedicated to god so miss clara had a frame plaque on a wall with all her aunt answered prayers make a list of all the ways god has come through for you in the past whatever your faith wavers recite this list remember in detail how god made a way the soldier's head is one of his most vulnerable areas without this helmet one bow to the head would prove fatal his helmet covered his entire head facial area and between his eyes his armor would prove useless if he wasn't equipped with his helmet the believer's helmet of salvation is the most crucial piece of armor for the Christian. Without the indwelling Holy Ghost that enters the believer at the moment of salvation, all other armor is useless. The salvation empowers believers to fight. It protects us in our weaknesses. Without salvation, there is no victory. Stand on the conviction of your salvation. When you knew without a doubt that we were going to heaven because of what Christ did on the cross, not even death can defeat you. We will all face extremely dark times. In these times, our salvation will lead, will light the way and carry us home. And just remember when you're in those hard times, Jesus is carrying your burdens. Placing your thoughts on the things above by listening to sermons via podcasts, be intentional about feeding your mind with spiritual through food throughout the day load up your podcast with sermons from the greatest preachers in the world and play those podcasts every single day on the way to work to and from work just be careful who you listen to of these greatest preachers because a lot of these greatest preachers sold out over money and you know um they weren't might have been you know at the start but yeah they, they're not with god at the moment the way they go sword of the spirit all other pieces of the soldier's arsenal are defensive witness weapons but not his sword the sword a glacis was a deadly weapon in the hands of a skilled warrior he could pierce through even the strongest armor our sword is the word of god both written and in the incarnate word every other piece of armor protects us against attacks without with god's word We are truly able to fight and defeat all enemies. Christ used scripture to defeat Satan when he was tempted in the desert. We must do the same. Christ rejected everything Satan offered him. We need to reject that too. How to use the sword of spirit. Arm yourself. Be intentional about reading scripture, as I mentioned earlier. Find a time that you can dedicate reading and studying the word of God where you are free of distractions. When attacked, fight back with the word of God. When Satan attacked Christ in the desert, he told them, No, for it is written, use Christ's example when Satan tries to come after you. When beaten down, immerse yourself in the Bible. Even those with great faith are going to have days where they feel like they are barely hanging on. On these days, ten minutes of your time in the Word is just not enough. Take a sick day, immerse yourself in his Word for the entire day. Read, study, pray, repeat. Also, when you like that, try and... um not eat and um you know sort of yeah don't eat just water d- distilled water and you know fast yeah the sweat fast prayer in prayer we show our reliance upon god and act to move our entire armor is rooted in his strength without his presence we are powerless in the fight we must move fight on our knees the one who has won the war is with us in battle, we see a victory when we fight in his power. How to use prayer. Pray when your eyes open every morning. Before you do anything else, go straight into prayer. I start every day asking God for the wisdom to make good decisions, the discipline to stay true to his word, and the vision to hear his voice for discreet aggression. Pray impulsively throughout the day. Sometimes we can get caught up in saying the same prayer over and over again. 
This can lead us to be in autopilot when we are speaking to our Father. You can break through the repetition by impulsively praying throughout the day. Pray for your people you encounter. Pray for the people you read about. Pray for the wonders and beauty of God's creations. And pray for the people that um, are doing it hard, the people that, you know, aren't quite there and, and lukewarm. Pray for them so they're not lukewarm. Have a conversation with God on your knees before you go to sleep. There is just something powerful about getting on your knees to honor the King of Kings. The creator of it is all omnipresent and available to talk to you at all times. Tell him what you are thankful for and talk to him about whatever is on your mind. Although the war has been won, the daily battle must be fought. Thankfully, we know with every fight we face that we have the armor and the weapons to help us defeat the enemy. The greatest armor of God, sermon of all time. Yeah. Uh-huh.